Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, on this very hot Thursday evening. Thanks for being with me or with us. Um, I'm Karina from the Matura Express, and today's topic is going to be environment and the pollution of the environment and the destruction of the environment. So I'll talk you through some vocab. I'll also talk you. Th through some of the problems that we have, like some of the problems that human beings cause, some damage that we cause to the environment. And we will also be talking about uh, measures that we can take so as to protect the environment or at least to like better the situation. Um, first of all, as you are preparing for oral exams and the most important factor of oral exams are definitely the vocab, the words that you're using. So I have some words for you. Um, there's a list of words, yes, thank you. There's a list of words um, in German. It's some of the key vocabulary on the topic. It's the most important words, or at least it's the words that I thought that you might need. Um, I g you have the words in German and I will give you the English equivalent. I'll write it down here. I hope you can read them. Some people say that my handwriting isn't the nicest. I will tell you the word in German and I'll also leave you a couple of seconds to think about the word. You probably do know the words in English, so I'll give you a second or two to think about them. You may want to write down the words that you don't know. So, first of all, we have die Umwelt, easy one, as the topic and the headline already gives you the solution. The environment. Usually in my pronunciation you already noticed that it's the and not that because the word environment start with an E. So we say the environment instead of the environment. Tendentially we do so. Um, Umweltverschmutzung. There we have more than one version that is correct. Usually it's pollution of the environment. Or another version that would be possible. Writing on that thing is quite hard. Environmental pollution. Hopefully, pollution words over already. Make sure that you add the A and the L to the word environmental pollution. Would be another word for pollution of the environment. Meeresspiegel, pretty easy one. Sea level. Sea levels are rising because of the glaciers and so on. You've heard all that before. Ansteigen to rise. I hope you've learned your irregulars. Rise, rose, risen. Pretty sure you've invested a lot of time to learn the irregulars. The polar regions. Polar regions. Sometimes we also talk about the polar caps. Would work as well. So the polar regions are melting, therefore the sea levels rising. The glacier again zurück. The glaciers. Harder one for the zurück again. The glaciers retreat. Might be one of those words that you haven't heard before. To retreat, sich zurückziehen, or the glaciers retreat. Schmelzen, easy one. Melt. Irregular, irregular word, but all three forms are the same. Melt, melt, melt. Klimawandel. Climate change. Hotly debated topic in the news pretty much all the time. As there are some countries and some presidents that actually do say that there is no climate change going on in the world. But we're going to talk about that a little later. Um, that one's an important one, but pretty easy as well. Global warming, global warming. So you just warm warming. You make a noun out of the word by uh, out of the adjective by adding an ing. The greenhouse effect. You also may want to or may have to explain it in your exams. What is the greenhouse effect? What effects does it have? Why is it important? Why is it an issue in uh, environmental pollution or environmental damage in that case? So you may want to 
look it up. The abgase are the fumes or the exhaust fumes. The cars should be clear. The fabriken or the factories. You definitely do know that as well, but be careful, there's a false friend out there. Sorry, you can't see. I've just noticed. I'm awfully sorry. So here again, climate change, global warming, the greenhouse effect, and the abgase, which are the exhaust fumes. Um, the false friend that I was talking about is the factories, the fabrik. There is a word out there that's spelled like that fabric, but that's not the word we're looking for. It means something totally different. So make sure that you're that you don't use it or don't be tempted by what seems to be the correct word, just because we make the conclusion from German, but it means something totally different. I'll let you have a quick look at the words again. Environment, pollution of the environment. I'm awfully sorry. Um, there's a spelling mistake in there. It's environment. Environmental pollution. Make sure you have the A and the L. Sea level to raise. Polar regions, polar caps. To retreat, for to look again, quite important word. Climate change, global warming, the greenhouse effect, and the exhaust fumes of factories and cars, caused by factories and cars. Some more to come. So when we talk about global warming in that case, we usually get some information on how you know, we usually get statistics that tell us for how many degrees the temperature has been raising degrees. The English word for grad. Abholzung, so we cut down trees for whatever reason, for creating ski lifts or building hotel resorts or whatever it is. Abholzung, comparatively hard word in English, deforestation. Deforestation includes the word forest. The D tells us that we like take it away basically, that we cut down trees. Deforestation. Regenwälder, easy one. Gives you a break in between. Rainforests, pretty easy one. Verschmutzung der Meere, we already had the Umweltverschmutzung, the Verschmutzung part stays the same, of course. Pollution. of the sea or the oceans. Whichever you prefer. In your exams you may want to use ocean instead of sea every now and then because in the oral exams repetitions of words, what with the are also an issue so you may want to try and find synonyms so words that mean the same thing basically. Dürre, so if you do not have any water, if it's really hot it's a drought. So there's no water, no precipitation, so no rain, no, no snow, no whatever. Wassermangel. The mangel part is probably the most important or the thing that you, or the part of the word that you may not know. Mangel, lack of water. So the lack of is the mangel an whatever, whatever you do not have, you can use the word lack. Hitze, should be clear, heat. The flood catastrophen. We don't necessarily need the word catastrophe. We floodings alone does the job, does the trick. That it is a catastrophe is obvious, so we can just simply say floodings. Tiere sterben aus, an interesting one. Animals get extinct. Make sure that you do not extinct is an adjective more or less in that case. Make sure that you do not add anything. Sometimes in oral exams we get people who think that it's a verb and add an ed because that's the traditional ending for regular verb forms in English. Make sure you don't. So animals get extinct because of that's a problem. Add them. You probably 
you've probably heard that before. An earthquake. An earthquake in Edbim. Also caused by various factors. Global warming might be one of the reasons. One up, Gange. One of the problems that we have. If there's too many rain, uh, too many rain, yeah. If there's too much rain falling in a short period of time, there might be one up, Gange. Landslides. One of the most important words in the discussion on global warming is the part of the Anoyaba, that's what we should work with, wind, water and the sun, that's what Anoyaba Energien are, use them so as to be able to create energy. Anoyaba, renewable and the energies I mean, it's the same. So renewable energies are Anoyabare Energien, that would be wind power, solar panels on the roof of your houses and using, what did I not say, water. And the nachhaltige Lebensstil, the Lebensstil part is probably clear, lifestyle, but the nachhaltig sustainable and we had the lifestyle as well. To lead a sustainable lifestyle basically means that you take the bus or the train instead of the car every now and then or that you do not use plastic bags, that you get a cloth bag or a paper bag or whatever instead of the traditional plastic bag that we normally get in supermarkets. Okay, so much for the vocabulary. Let's have a look at the words again if there's anything that you be, have to be careful about deforestation, rainforests, lack of water. As I said, the lack of important word can be used for pretty much anything is not like topic related. Um, the animals to get extinct, not extincted, earthquakes, quite important. Renewable and sustainable are definitely words that you can use for your oral exams as well, or that you should remember for oral exams, they are pretty important and that's pretty lopsided. Okay, so much for the vocabulary. We will go on with some of the problems that our environment has to face. We've already mentioned some of them. I guess that I'm not in the picture. <laughs> I guess that the most important ones are definitely no this is not are definitely global warming. So the earth is getting warmer. I think at the moment it's only about two degrees. That's what, that's at least what climate experts say. Um, it's gonna increase in the future if we continue like that. So global warming is definitely a problem, has an effect on the temperature of the seas, of the oceans. It also leads to the melting of the glaciers. There's also quite many statistics around on the internet, so if you Google glaciers or retreats of glaciers, there's a lot of statistics that tell you by how many meters or centimeters the glaciers have retreated because of global warming. There's also some very negative predictions predictions that say that the glaciers will be gone in a couple of years, couple of centuries, we don't, or a couple of decades, maybe not centuries, but decades. We don't really know, but anyway, global warming does have an effect on the glaciers and also on the temperature of the sea. So it affects the sea. The habitats of the species that live in the sea of all the sea creatures. If it gets warmer, they have to change their routines, their lifestyle, their 
lives basically they find it harder to find food or um, find places to stay so for them global warming is an issue as well then we have Greenhouse gas is definitely an issue as well. If you use Google and type in greenhouse gases, greenhouse effects in China, there will be all those quite terrifying pictures of what environmental pollution or the pollution of the air, air pollution in that case, did to China and other nations where there is heavy industry going on, where there's a lot of factories, where there's a lot of people using the car. Um, it has an effect on the air quality, of course. Quality. Thereby, it definitely does affect the life quality of the people as well. I would strongly recommend to have a look at the issue of China. People are running around with dust masks sometimes because the air is not breathable anymore. You can't really go outside and enjoy. Then sea pollution. Big issue together with global warming. Global warming does have an effect on the temperature of the water which in the long run does have an effect on the animals and the species probably on us as well. But there's the big issue of plastic. Plastic waste. Um, those of you who did go shopping or have gone shopping in the last couple of weeks or months, they've probably been asked whether or not they want the plastic bag. So some of the stores, they changed it. Cloth bags instead of plastic. So not that many plastic bags anymore, which is a good move. There's statistics out there that prove that most of the plastic that we use, so plastic bottles, plastic wrappers and so on and so forth, are only in use for approximately five minutes, so they are not really worth being used, basically. It takes, or with some, like with wood or with paper, it doesn't really take that long until they decompose, until, until they degrade. Plastic never does. So... It's an issue as well. In the sea there are so-called plastic islands. You've probably heard about them as well. So it's basically plastic that washes up in one particular place in the sea. Um, does have to do with the currents, I suppose. So wherever the plastic is, like, the plastic goes wherever the current brings it. But there's some islands in the water that are entirely made out of plastic. Island is a euphemism in that in that sense. So there's a lot of plastic in the sea. That's why we should definitely avoid it. And now my picture is gone. Anyway, what did I do now? Yep. Oh well. Ah, there we go. So we should use cloth, which means um, clothy stuff. So you have cloth bags instead of plastic bags and paper bags instead of plastic bags. Then, what other environmental problems do we have? Um, heavy rainfalls are probably an effect of global warming as well, or that would scientists say that the warmer it gets, the more unpredictable the, the weather gets, so this heavy Heavy rainfalls at times where we are not used to them could be an effect as well. That leads to landslides, floodings. Landslides, especially in mountainous areas. So landslides would also be a problem that affects Austria or Europe. Floodings as well, of course. Then, what else do we have? What other environmental problems do we have, really? 
Hmm. What else is worth mentioning? We've mentioned air quality. We mentioned disease. Oh yeah, deforestation, of course. Deforestation. Cutting down trees. So those of you who are into skiing out there, you probably noticed that many of the lift tracks run through a forest. So that means that previously the trees had to be cut down. So as to be able to create the tracks, so that's a bad thing as well. Um, but then Austria only does deforestation on a comparatively low scale, I guess. But then there's deforestation of the rainforests. For wood, pr wood production. But of course also in some really touristy areas to get places for real estate. So the issue of deforestation does have two sides. So there's deforestation on the one hand in places like Austria where it's not such a big thing, I guess. But then there is cutting down of rainforests for wood production to get real estate and also for cattle, which is animals that need the space to to graze. That's so we cut down trees so as to be so as to create more farming space, basically. Cutting down rainforests is, as you probably do know, a quite bad idea because they produce oxygen, which in turn leads to really, yep, leads to really bad air quality, bad air. Which then brings us back to the China example. The fewer trees, the more air pollution there is and the worse the air quality gets. That's how we can sum up the issue. I think that's... Can you think of any... Say hi to my, to my partner. So, hi. hello. <laughs> <laughs> can you think of any other environmental problems that we have? I think you mentioned most of the very big problems. I think what's also worth mentioning is because you said about the sea pollution and the plastic waste that I think a lot of you have seen some pictures of, you know, sea turtles caught in yeah. plastic wires. Good argument. So I think also this kind of affects the Definitely. Animals. Definitely does. Plastic wildlife. In that case, the marine wildlife. So. And that in the end, also the humans suffer from it because in the end, we also want to eat the fish. But if you know, there are also pictures on the internet of fish which are entirely filled with plastic. So I think you, you can all imagine that it's not good eating this fish. So Very good point. Thank you. My voice in the background has done a really good job. Um, there was, now that you reminded me of it, there was a picture online, I guess it was on f Facebook, I suppose. As Facebook is an invaluable source of information for all of us. Um, there was a picture of a huge whale on the internet, was I think today or yesterday, can't remember. And the whale died and it washed up on a shore somewhere, Indonesia, I think it was. And its stomach was filled with like not just pieces of plastic, but huge plastic bags. So that means that probably a hotel or some private person just dumped their plastic bags into the water. The whale ate it. They can probably, big animals eat big stuff. So they probably just, or eat probably just swallowed the whole thing. So it definitely does affect marine wildlife and by affecting marine wildlife, it affects us, which we don't want. And this is a really bad smiley. Well, it doesn't get, doesn't get any better. Anyway, um, I think the punchline is whatever we do, it has an effect on human beings. So we should definitely be super careful about what we are doing and we should definitely come up with a plan. What we can do to save the environment, 
I guess there's two sides to the whole thing. Um, there's something that all of us can do. There are like small things that we can try to incorporate into our everyday lifestyle that help the environment. But there's also large scale things that governments or countries could do. You could first of all, I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about things that you do in your real lives that like help the environment or to think about the question whether or not you are an environmentally conscious person. Are you a good person? Are you nice to the environment? Are you trying to do stuff that helps the environment? We talked about it. We talked about it before and we decided that we are really good. We are like super eco people, but just think about a few ideas, stuff that, stuff that you do or don't, or that you could do better. And then let's brainstorm some ideas. Um, the first thing that we thought about beforehand was public transport. Public transport. Taking buses instead of the car. Taking the train instead of the car. Whatever, leave the car at home or not get in the car for as much as possible. Um, doing something for our health as well, go to uni or to school by bike every now and then and not with the car. Good for the fitness as well, by the way. So public transport is something that we could do. So that's like small scale stuff, small scale. That's suggestions for all of us. So we could take public transport instead of the car or another option like there some of you may live in areas where the mm, public transport system the net of buses and trains isn't that great and after school you'd have to wait for one and a half hours for the next bus to come which is probably not what you want to do so mm, nope not that one you could do a carpool You've probably heard the word before, carpooling is more than one person sh sharing one car. So it's, you know, trying to, I think we call it Fahrgemeinschaften in German. So in the morning you don't go to a school in your own car, but you'll like four or five people go in one car. So a carpool would definitely be an option for those of you who think that public transport is not an option in that case. So cloth bags. Instead of the bad plastic bags, it's an easy one. Does not only hold true for bags, but also for wrappers. So wrappers, verpackungen. I think there are some shops now that try to get rid of their plastic wrappers for sandwiches and bread or whatever it is, and try to make it paper bags instead, which is a really good idea as well. In any case, Considering, we've heard that before, considering environmental pollution, plastic definitely is an issue and we definitely have to try to get rid of plastic for as much as possible or try to avoid plastic. So alternative um, bags or paper and cloth instead of plastic would definitely be a very good idea. What else could we do? That's one of the suggestions that the internet gives you. If you look up what can we do for the environment, planting trees would be an idea, so those of you who have a garden do so. Would definitely help to improve the air quality in the future. So do so if you can. What else can we do? Green power. So there is solar panels on the roof like it's you can install it on the roof of your houses um, what they basically do is transform sunlight into energy 
Um, I think Austria has the system where you can get funding from the government if you decide to install solar, pa solar panels on your house afterwards. So the Austrian government does give you subsidies. They give you money for that. So I guess thinking about installing solar panels would be an idea in the future. What else? Something that we can all do and that we probably do not think about all the time, or at least I don't, is unplugging whatever phone chargers, chargers, TV, computers, whatever. All the electronic equipment that we use at home. If we leave the house and if we know that we won't use them anytime soon, just unplug them. Obviously also helps the environment, helps saving energy, help, and that's a good thing in the long run. Uh, what else could we do? Walk oh, the bike, we had that before. Oh, that might be a thing. Paper. Reducing paper is a good thing in the sense of like the less paper we use, the fewer trees we have to cut down basically. So all the unnecessary chunk mail that we get usually if you like if you have a subscription and abo for um, newsletters and so on and so forth. Nowadays in the 21st century you can get them online. You do not really have to get paper advertisements of all the stores, of all the shops that you like. So you could avoid too much paper by cancelling all the junk mail and subscribe to newsletters online which saves you a lot of waste and it also is good for the environment because it helps you to save paper and therefore trees. Papers, uh, paper is connected to trees, so that's a really good point. What else could we do? Oh yeah, that's a good one as well. Local food. Those of you who live on the countryside, um, you probably do have farmers markets or Farmers that you can buy stuff from. Farmers markets. Sorry, that's an apostrophe missing. Um, you have farmers markets buying stuff on a farmers market or in the town that you come from or from local shops or whatever. Um, means that you do not have to import stuff from Italy or Spain or even further away. Importing stuff from Italy first of all produces a lot of traffic and it produces a lot of exhaust fumes and that's what we don't want. So the shorter the transportation distances are, the better it is for the environment. The less trucks, uh, the fewer trucks are on the motorway and that is really good for the environment goes without further explanation, I guess. So buying local foods would be a good idea. Farmers markets, going to the local farmer, is as it, especially for those of you who live on the countryside and do have the opportunity to do that. Anything else that I can think of? No, I think that's it. I think that's the most important thing. Yep. There's of course also a few measures that the governments or the countries could take. So it's also, it's not only up to us, it's mainly up to us to save the environment, but there's also some things that the governments and the environment uh, and the country, sorry, um, could do. First of all, uh, mm -hmm. okay, let's bear ourselves to introduce, takes too long, um, implement laws that have to do with the protection of the environment. 
Austria does have quite high standards, but other countries don't. So there's limits on how much CO2 um, factories can produce, for example, in certain countries. Um, there's limitations on certain pollution levels that countries can reach. If they go higher, they have to pay money or they get punished or whatever. Um, so governments can make sure that those, those laws are obeyed and that the factories cannot produce unlimited CO2. It's one thing that countries' governments are responsible for. Um, what else could governments do? Well, I guess that if we do not really know about environmental problems, there's not much that we can do against it, so governments could advertise the issue, they could tell us what we can do, make sure that everybody knows about the problems that the environment has. Nowadays, on social media platforms, on social media of whatever sort, it's probably quite easy to um, appeal to the people and to tell the people that environmental Pollution is an issue and that there is a lot that we can actually do. So going back to all the things that we've mentioned, could be government, the government's task to like spread the news and bring people on the right track, tell us how we can support the environment, how we can help the environment. Good, I think, let me have a look at my cheat sheets. Yeah, I guess that's it. Social media might be a point. Um, if you personally do think that the protection of the environment is something that is important, and if you have Facebook or Instagram or whatever, you could probably also share your thoughts on the whole thing or subscribe to the WWF or to other uh, environmental organizations. Greenpeace, of course, how could I forget Greenpeace? Green, so that the G, Greenpeace. If you subscribe to their web pages or if you subscribe to their page on Facebook, then you get all the news and you could share them and spread them and basically inform your friends about it. So that your friends know how important it is to protect and to save the environment. Because yeah, some big nations in the world do think that, or some people think that climate change doesn't exist. Um, for your exams, it might probably be quite useful to also be able to talk about um, news that are related to the topic. So if your A-level topic is environment, you should probably also know what's going on in the news right now about the topic is not of course, that doesn't hold true for the environment topic only, but for all the topics. Um, now, with the environment, it's pretty easy. Keywords, Donald Trump, um, who, first of all, does not believe that climate change really exists. Um, there are some people who deny climate change. It was already in Trump's election campaign, he said right from the start that climate change does not exist and that it's basically only people trained to cause panic and whatever and that extreme weather situations are normal so that, you know, 35 degrees in April are normal, that it has always existed. To deny means leugnen, so some people basically say that all the statistics about climate change and global warming are fake. Um, that'd be something to talk about in the A levels as well, would make the connection, like the theory behind the topic and the actual world. Um, the Paris Agreement. Agreement. 
Did I misspell the word? No, I didn't. Um, the Paris Agreement basically says that countries have the obligation to obey certain um, laws in environmental protection. Are the, is Austria part of the whole thing? Yeah. Probably. I think that. the only countries who are not part of it is now the US and Syria. Oh, I think <laughs> even even North Korea is part really? of it. So <laughs> that's so sad. Like, um, yeah, especially for so the Paris Agreement basically says. Uh, I think, but don't like don't pin me down on that. Look it up on the internet. I think that it's about two degrees that we or the Paris Agreement generally says that the temperature on Earth should not increase by more than two degrees in the next couple of years. There's a certain time limit, I think, until two thousand fifty. But as I said, don't pin me down on that. But it has something to do with two degrees. So we should make sure, or yeah, the countries and the people, the country and their people, should make sure that the temperature on Earth does not rise by more than two degrees in the next centuries, decades, whatever. Um, so that's what the Paris Agreement is all about. Trump said no, because he doesn't believe in climate change anyway. So um, the US left the Paris Agreement. They said, well, no, which means that it basically does have, or pretty sure it does have an effect on mm -hmm, that moment when you can't produce a plural anymore, uh, on the big American factories because they probably abolish some of the laws that America, that America has. As I said, there are laws in most of the countries concerning environmental protection. The fact that Trump decided to leave the Paris Agreement basically makes it easier for the big players, the big companies, the multinational companies in America to pollute the air again a little more. They don't have to be careful anymore. It's also about waste separation. It's also about um, what to do with the waste, with the leftover products that factories produce. I guess they're lowering the standards now or the laws get a little less strict. So that's not a good idea. And now that we mentioned it, where is space? My letters are too big. Um, because it's so obvious, I did not mention basically one of the easiest measures against the pollution of the environment, which is waste separation. So make sure that you put your trash into the right bins, that you separate your waste, that you separate plastic from paper, that you bring your bottles to the bottle bank and throw them in the right containers. So waste separation is definitely one of the easier things and something that we can all do together with using plastic, uh, plastic transport, public transport and Trying to avoid plastic, waste separation, I would say that's one of the things that we can all do. I hope that you know a little more about the topic environment, that I was able to give you some words. I think that the words, the unit vocabulary that I gave you should cover most of the like most important factors of the most important aspects that there are. So this is it from my side. I hope that you found the talk useful and I would like you I would like to invite you to the next talk. I hope you zoom in again. This was it. This was Karina from the Motorola Express. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs> okay. That's my partner. Hello. <laughs> Say hi to your audience.